Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Right now, the question I'm answering is what is up and what do you get with the new edition of Hero Quest from Avalon Hill? Now, for anyone who does not recognize this game or know this game, this is actually a reprint of a classic board game called Hero Quest Battle System. Hero Quest Battle System from Games Workshop and Milton Bradley, a cooperative effort they did way back in the 80s. This is a game many people grew up playing. I actually played it in my later teens and actually played it with my wife when we were dating. This is one of my favorite games of all time. It's a simple dungeon crawler with fantastic components. And everyone has been asking for it to come into print, re be reprinted for years. And well, here we have it. This is the newest version of this classic. You can already see that they have um, duplicated the feel and look of the original game. Although this does feature 100% new artwork, but obviously inspired by the original. Let's take a look at what we get inside these boxes. We're going to tip this big box down here. And we're going to crack this baby open and take a look at what you get in the box for Hero Quest Game System from Avalon Hill. Just reprinted this year. Alright, here you have my giant box of Hero Quest. And one of the things you will notice is this game does not come straight wrapped. Instead, what we have are, you can actually see them really well, plastic stickers holding everything closed. What I'm going to do to try not to cause any damage is instead of peeling them off, I'm just going to cut them with a hobby knife. And then I'm going to flip everything over. Uh, so what you do get to see here is the back of the box showing your four heroes. Notes that there's going to be 70 miniatures, features stunning artwork, which again is, is very much inspired by the original. A full list of contents in the story. I'll leave that for you to discover on your own. All right, here we go. I have not seen inside this box, so you're getting to see this. All right, so if that's the rule book, it's huge. All right, it's not. Okay, I was totally not. We have a box inside a box. So this is actually a sleeve to hold miniatures. I'm trying to think of the best way. You know what? I'm going to put this to the side, and we'll go through those after. And then we have the side. This is heavy. Like, like, I, I wish you could feel it, how heavy this is. This is heavy. Then we have the board, which immediately is probably going to be a burst of nostalgia for everyone who knew this, who has seen this before. I Honestly, I, I could compare my original right now in the video, but I'm not going to. I cannot quite zoom out enough, so what I'm going to do is jump over to this view and hold this up so everyone can see it. One of the things that's always been iconic about Hero Quest is the different colored rooms, which was a great way to tell apart in the generic dungeon. Now, what the game does is it uses this standard board so that you can create a variety of different dungeons by putting doors in different spots. So a room with no doors on it is just corridor, or sorry, it's just walls, so you can't get to it. So they use this generic board with all different kinds of shaped rooms in order to create different dungeons each game. It is one-sided. It is a nice mounted board. No complaints there. It feels bigger than the original, but that could just be in my head. Next, we have the Dungeon Master screen, which comes... Uh, oh, and a punch board. So we got a few things here. So I'm going to slide off this cardboard paper. Lots of paper. More paper. All right, what do we got? <laughs> We got a bunch of stuff kind of all stuck together here. So. All right, I think I have, no, okay, it felt, this felt thin. So I, I do have to say right away, the cardboard here is not thick. The cardboard counters here are a little thinner than I would expect. I'm a little disappointed by this. Um, most board games come with thicker counters at this point. Uh, the one advantage this does have is that when it's on the map, it doesn't stand out as much. So you've got the dungeon entrance, you've got various walls, and again, you use that map to make different things, tokens to track things. I'm going to punch one of these. Okay, also, these do not punch easily. This is a lot more work than I've usually had to do, and what's going to happen is you're going to get little taggies on the edge because of how well they were attached. Not a big deal, but if you're a, uh, you're a little obsessed with board games that might bother you, you might want to trim those off. What I'm really surprised is how little. This is it. This is the only punch board so far we've seen, and this may be it for the whole game. Then we have the rule book, which thankfully they didn't make as big as the box. 
Uh, it says age 14 plus plays two to five players. Um, that, I feel like I'm opening the original game. Like, this really looks familiar. Um, so there's instructions. One of the things to note is they do call the bad guy in this Zargon, which the name changed in the old edition depending on what country you bought it in. So it's using the North American name. There's information just for the heroes. There's useful information that will help you play the game and information that can can affect the gameplay. So what they're doing is calling out certain things that are important. So you've got the contents, how Zargon sets up the game. There should be a score sheet in here and some character sheets. There's a background on the world, which will be really interesting because the original game was very much set in Warhammer. So I'm wondering what they might have done to change it because this no longer has the Games Workshop license. I would have to assume that this is no longer a Warhammer board game. So how to begin the quest? There is a lot of text in this. For what um, is almost a gate, well, was a gateway dungeon crawling game, this looks more complicated than I thought. From what I understand, the rules have been tweaked to improve them slightly, but overall is the same game we grew up and loved. Different ways movement works, and so on, as well as a place to put game notes in the back of the book. That's a little old school. Then with that, we have the quest book. This would be an interesting one. So this even follows the format of the original quest book was set up like this. And the way it was done was the dungeon was here and the rules were here, and I'm assuming we're going to see the same. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to see. I don't, I'm going to go through this very quickly, but this again shows how you only use part of the map to set up dungeons. And there's wandering monsters. There's a lot in here. This feels thicker than the original book. We're going to jump to the very end here. You are looking at 31 pages of scenarios. So I'm going to guess 30 scenarios. That's really impressive. And then something I always appreciated that I had a lot of fun with when I was younger was making my own. So here's all the icons and everything to make your own. We used to trace this on, um, you know, tracing paper to be able to draw on our own maps. Looks great. Quality is excellent here. It's nice, glossy. We have what I was called the Dungeon Master screen, but the Zardon screen. With the stats for the various monsters, a summary of the combat rules, the hero's rules, and how monsters act. So one of the things that I always thought was interesting on in this one was... Um, the monsters don't roll randomly to move, and but the, the the there's no AI, so it's unlike say Gloomhaven, the character playing I already forgot his name Zardon, the character playing Zardon is the one that fully controls the monsters and can do what they want with it. So very cool looking screen here. That's some of the paper products. We're just gonna get out of the way. Then we have space. All right, so the rest of this is gonna be minis. So we're going to toss this back in, this back in, and I'll probably be reopening this box once I've opened the other stuff. So what we have here are sleeves. So we're going to get this out of the way. I'm just making a pile beside me. We're going to take these over here. Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks so awesome. So one of the things the original HeroScape was known for is this awesome scenery. But the scenery was partially plastic with cardboard inserts. And the doors were similar. They were plastic on the outside, but they were just like, sorry, they, were, they had a plastic base, but cardboard just slotted into it. Now we have fully plastic scenery, um, including additional skulls you can add to the scenery. That was something that was in the original game that I thought was hilarious that they have continued is there are additional bits you can actually add on. And there should be, yes, here they are, little rats that you can add to the scenery. That was a feature of the original. You could peg them into the top. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just hold this up so you can kind of see all of it all together here. What I totally plan to do with this game, and I fully admit, is stealing some of the scenery for role-playing games in Gloomhaven. So yeah, this is, so the original, oh, that's chunky. Nice. It is solid. So another thing with the original uh, miniatures in Hero Quest is they were hollow. So they were very light. So what we have here is like an altar with a book on it. Then we have the torture rack. This is all coming out nice and easy, which is nice. So we have the torture rack here. Next should be a throne. Yep, we have the throne. Then two tables. 
that's so much nicer than the original. So the original had a piece of plastic here and a piece of plastic here, and the part the wood was a piece of cardboard. Now we have a solid, chunky table that looks just as good from every side. Oh. Then we have what I was worried was a little fragile. We have a weapon rack. Now I will say this might have warped a little bit. I don't know if you can see that over this, but yeah, we got, it's not, um, there's a little bit of warping there, but honestly, I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah, this one's a little thinner than the rest. It's it's a rubbery plastic. And actually there, it no longer looks as. So we have a weapon rack. I will admit what I would have loved to have seen is some new scenery. All right, so the alchemy table. And what's interesting is the base game, this scale was a separate piece. And you can tell it was on this, but then they glued it in, which is kind of an odd choice. So we have the alchemist table. And again, big solid chunk of plastic. This should be the sarcophagus, which I was going to say, the original used to open. It still does. So we have a sarcophagus that does open up. This is so inspired by while still being exact. Uh, we have the fireplace. We should have some treasure chests. Oh, these are so nice. These would be great for a D&D game. We have treasure chests. There we go. You can see the detail in the locking mechanism there. Two bookcases, two of the most useful pieces of scenery I own, which I'm not going to pull the other one out. We have bookcases with actual details on the shelves, including the look of books in the back there that you can't quite see because they're too far back. Lots of detail and two-sided. And finally, we have the cabinet. Oh, these are so nice. Hasbro put out a set of... Hero Quest scenery, I can just buy it because this is some of the nicest scenery. And then we should have a ton of doors, which I'm not. Oh, there we go. So we're just going to replace closed doors with open doors. Yeah, so that's how they did it this time. So before, just in the old game was the same. You would change out which piece of cardboard was in there. We have open, closed and open doors, which works. I'll admit having doors that swing open would have been kind of nice, but I have some of those from Games Workshop and uh, they all broke over the years. So what we also have here is a pad of character sheets, which, man, that's, there's no way you're going to use these. And I'm sure if you do, you can find more online. Then we have the cards. Cards are nice, full-sized, uh, really thick stack of cards. We have cards with gold backs. Cards with monsters on them. We have artifacts. We've got equipment. Lots of equipment. Lots of equipment. We've got dread spells. Water spell. Yeah, I was going to say, there shouldn't be many of each of the elemental spells. Earth spell. Fire spell. Air spell. Treasure. All right, there's all your deck cards various decks these are the characters so these have a very different look to the the original artwork on here so we have the barbarian the dwarf the elf the wizard and rule summaries for the four players much appreciated now that's the core game note there will be more heroes and some of the other stuff we'll be looking at then we've got the monster cards that have the stats for all the monsters. So all you do is you lay these out if the monsters are in play. You've got Dread Warriors, which are the old Chaos Warriors. Abominations, which in the original game were Femir. The Gargoyle, which still kind of looks like the Greater Demon of Corn. Goblin, which looks much more Pathfinder looking now. The Mummy. The Orc, which looks more World of Warcraft than Warhammer. The Skeleton. And the Zombie. Artifacts, I'm not going to show all these off. I'm just going to flip through some of them so you can see it. Uh, oh, wow. They went with the old black and white card art style, which is interesting. So Fortune's Longsword is here. You've got Orcs Bane. These are all artifacts you can earn during the game. For those who haven't played it before, I am not going to spoil them, but I'm amused that they still included a talisman. 
Games Workshop back in the 80s used to do a lot of work to overlap their games. The equipment deck is something when you start searching in that, you can find equipment. Again, I'm surprised they went with the black and white line art. This would have been a good chance to me, for me, in my opinion, to have upgraded these with color. But you know what? I'm sure there'd be fans out there complaining it doesn't look quite the same. So yes, you have multiple shields and short swords and toolkits. Dread spells are the ones the bad guys use, and you've got various spells. Again, we're sticking with that same line art. I'm just going to flip through them quickly. Lots of card text on these, so you don't have to look up anything in the book. You've got your three water spells, three earth spells, three fire spells. And note, they're not all attack spells. Just to point that out, like courage is a fire spell. And uh, air spells, yes. And then we have the treasure. We have all kinds of gold, gems, heroic brew. I remember the heroic brew. Potion of healing. Oh no, you found a wandering monster. There we have all the cards. All right, no, what we haven't seen yet is the baddies. So I'm sure that's next. Oh, another bonus I will point out. It also has the symbol of the monster on here so that when you're looking at the dungeon um, scenario, you can quickly see that's the zombie symbol icon. So far, very impressed with the storage solution here. This works. Like, this is holding everything. We're going to check this. Yeah, cards don't slide around. I'm impressed so far. This is a nice insert for a that cheap molded plastic insert. All right, what I need next is this. This is the last one. This should have the miniatures for the heroes and the monsters. Oh, even the colors feel classic. All right, the, the gargoyle has shrunk and has a very, very bent weapon. So one thing I am sure you will hear other people complain about here is that bent weapon is a little frustrating. Um, I haven't checked the actual make of this plastic, but this may be the type that you can... But yeah, you can see the very, very bent axe there. Much different model from the original. What's interesting is this obviously didn't mean to bend there because there's a spot where that could poke. Uh, pro tip, take a picture of this with your phone. That way you know what goes where when you're putting things away. Here is the replacement for the Famir, and I gotta say they're pretty cool looking, pretty badass looking. There we go. Look at the teeth on that. So those are cool. I'm gonna move over to Dread Knights. Yeah, that is, that is not a uh, Chaos Warrior anymore. But look at the detail. That is really nice miniature. I'm really impressed. We got four Dread Knights. One that doesn't want to stay in his place. But you know what? That's going to stay fine. And we're moving into Orcs. Which I am having a tired time getting this Orc out. We should have two different sculpts of the Orcs. So we have, again, we're going to try to do this to see if it'll focus. We have an Orc. And a different orc. I really like the look of this orc. And we've got three different sculpts of goblins, it looks like. Goblins very much look like Pathfinder goblins to me. Love the long ears. Goblin. Okay, they are not easy to get out, but like nothing's breaking here or anything. Great looking minis. I, I am even more impressed than I thought I'd be by these miniatures. Skeleton, that probably won't show very well on camera because it's white. Oof. Yeah, those are a little rough getting out, mommy. That one's very reminiscent of the original. That's cool. That is a female orc. It's a nice touch. Yes, we have two different female orcs. That is a nice touch. And then, man, that is such a different miniature from the original. There is your main baddie. Various lich type 
character. And finally, the heroes. You have your barbarian, which the camera really doesn't like red. There we go. Dwarf with a really large axe. The elf. And the wizard. Finally, we have the dice. There is a set of two standard D6s. I'm not going to bother. Uh, they are etched. Okay, that is awesome. So one of the biggest problems with the original game, because no one expected people to still be playing it 40 years later. Sorry, it's not. Is it 40 years? It is 40 years almost. Well, 30 years later. Um, the dice would wear off. So skulls are hits. Shields are defense. Oh, sorry. Shields are defense. And that is a potential special effect happens. A uh, different, slightly different look from the original. Like, like it, the, the overall symbols are the same. You have a skull and a shield, but it is a different graphic, which fits everything else. But these, you can't tell it, but those are actual etched dice. Bonus. So there you have everything that comes in the base box for Hero Quest. That one orc just doesn't want to stay in there. I hmm, trying to decide if I would keep these. Like, what am I protecting them? dust. I guess they probably stack better with these. This one is heavy. This one could use this. And the box. There you have everything you get in the core Hero Quest game system core box, the new printing of Hero Quest from Avalon Hill. All right, thank you for joining me for my unboxing of the Hero Quest game system, fresh, hot off the the presses from Hasbro Pulse, uh, Hasbro's crowdfunding platform, a reprint of a classic game from the late '80s, merge the year of Games Workshop and Milton Bradley. That brought a lot of joy to a lot of people, myself included. This new game looks just as cool as the original, if not more. It looks been modernized. It's got better graphic design. Just everything pops a little more. It's a little brighter. You've got full color scenario books now, for example. And while fantastic looking miniatures, the miniature quality is fantastic. Now note, these miniatures are not hobby level miniatures. If you are a diehard Warhammer player, or you collect miniatures to paint them. These are more game piece style miniatures and due to that do have some bending. Doesn't bother me at all, but it might be a problem for some people. What I am really looking forward to next is sitting down with my family, with my own kids, and introducing Hero Quest to a new generation. Now I am Mo Tuzano at the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop One Word. You can hit up our webpage at tabletopbellhop.com where you can find other gaming content, including news, reviews, and answers to your gaming questions. We're trying to be a Dear Abby for gamers, and you can find answers on that, that page, and you can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Finally, we do have a Patreon page that helps pay for the setup I've got going in here. I know it's not the most beautiful thing. We're up to two cameras. I would love to go to three to be able to do a close-in camera. So you can support us at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. That's it for this unboxing. Good night and game on.